YouTube House Audio presents Warhammer 40k The Ember Wolves, written by Rob Sanders and narrated by War Wyvern. The void rumbled at the arrival of the Dark Mechanicum. Monstrous coffin ships thundered into the backwater systems of the Gorgonopsy Maestral, glimmering with the fell light of corruption. Each transported tainted constructs, tech pledged to the War Master. They were packed with traitor cyborgs of the Thalaxi cohorts. They carried the fallen god machines of the Legio Ardax. The Ember Wolves. Death by any other name. Out of the heart of the Maestral lay the shabby little hive world of Absalom. It was here, in the shadow of ancient hives, that the towering war machines of the Legio Castigatra made their stand. Overconfident and untried, they had been drawn together with other legions as part of the newly formed Adeptus Titanicus. The loyalist titans marched forth under the banners of the false Fabrigator General of Terra, and met Horus Lupercal's forces god-machine to god-machine. The hive world shook with landing titans, brought down with rancid expediency from macro-carriers achieving low orbit. The dunes of the surrounding ash wastes trembled, while the crooked spires and looming accretions of the hives fell and crashed into the cityscape below. With ear-splitting horns of arrival, cybernetic shock troops spilled from landing transports. Screams spread through the shanties as the laxy soldiers made their maniac way through the corrugated townships, wildly gunning down the hive wilders. But the true terror came with the first steps of the god machines, a cacophonous thunder that shook such structures to scrap and crushed families underfoot. Colossal weaponry boomed to life, power converters filled the air with the hum of static, while the heavy metal clunk of loading mechanism echoed through the canyons between the hives. By the time the Emperor-class titans of the Legio Castigatra arrived to intercept the traitor machines and retake the landing sites, the Ember Wolves had long been lying in wait. Balthus Voltamand glowered in his command throne. His battle-scarred face looked like a topographical map in the red of the canopy lighting, as well as being commander of Canis Altiriax. He was the ranking princeps amongst the Warhound Scout Titans of Battle Pack Carnassia. Like others of the pack, Voltamund's machine had once borne another name, a proto Gothic moniker, little more now than a lousy Terran curse word that no longer had any meaning for the War Master's battle pledged. The pack had taken position amongst the hyperstacks and fat chimneys of Hive Septus. The billowing, metallic clouds of industry cloaked the area, hiding even the towering forms of the battle pax's six warhounds. They listened to hives in uproar, and the thunderous weaponry of loyalist machines and the war master's finest exchanging distant fire. While they lay in wait, much had happened. Mechanicum allied thunderbolts on a bombing run ran afoul of barrage balloons surrounding Carnassia's landers. The hive spire, with its palaces and grand ballrooms, suffered the quake of passing god machines before toppling down the side of the monstrous city. With aircraft plummeting through the chemical smog and colossal chunks of masonry raining down after them, the ember wolves held their nerve and position. When Tantarus Magnificat rounded the hive, the warmonger's stride taking it through the decimated shanties Voltamand knew that he had acquired a target worthy of his battle pack. He stared through the cockpit eyes of Canis Altiriax. He scanned for heat signatures, for echolocational feedback, and movement among the cycling visual spectra. He didn't need them. Overhead, between chimney spumes of rancid smoke, 
Voltmund had thought he saw the jagged cityscape of the hive itself moving. But it was not. It was the fortress towers of the Tantorus Magnificat's hunched canopus emerging from the crooked confusion of accretions and spires. The princeps knew the mighty titan of old. He had fought both alongside the veteran machine at Vorda Corona and against it at Belisar Alpha and Fendrick's world. But he had never had the opportunity to actually engage the warmonger, and wasn't going to waste this one now. A grating ping reverberated across the cockpit enclosure. I have an Auspex contact, Moderati Schenk reported from his forward throne, his voice a monotonous drone. You have more than that, Baldman said, with a wolfish smile. Is that? Cordella began, leaning over from her station. It is, the princeps told her with relish. Tantorus Magnificat. The false mechanicum of terror wishes to test us, and we welcome the challenge. The ember wolves do not choke from the fight, but we are ferocity made metal, the doom of mightier machines. We bring gods to their armored knees. Powering up, Shank said, rerouting automotive energies to the warhound's dormant magna hydraulics and legs. Waking the engines here. Voltamund banged his fist against the rune-bank wall behind his throne, hoping to rouse the cantankerous construct in his malformed servitors in the compartment beyond. Tell that malingering priest to be ready. We stride into battle. Dark destiny awaits us in the thunder to come. Weapon systems online, Cordella reported, as the clunk of the Vulcan Megabolter's autofeeds rumbled through the superstructure. Awaiting your command. Ursus Claw ready. Harpoon primed. Very good, Moderati, Voltman said, while the Warhound Titans of the Ember Wolves carried different primary weapons for tactical variety. Right arm of each was mounted with spear and cable weapon systems, designed to ensnare and bring down greater prey. Shank, open a channel. All Warhounds of Carnassia. Affirmative, Moderati said. You are patched through, princeps. Harken, my brothers, Balthus Voltman called across the crackling channel. Berate your crew and stir the monstrous spirit of your machines. The wait is over. The time has come. Pray worthy of our efforts draws near. Tantorus Magnificat. A voice like churned gravel ventured back across the channel. Then the honor shall be mine. It was Grentel Thrax, princeps of Rubella Mortem. His warhound, the Red Death, had the greatest number of god kills in the pack, and, but for the fact that he was a disagreeable maniac, would have led the six machines of Carnassia in the hunt. In appointing a princeps primus, more tactical cogitators had prevailed, and Balthus Voltmund and Canis Altyriax had been given the honor instead. Across the open channel, Voltmund could hear Thrax threatening his Moderati crew with the scepter that he always carried, and the sound of the Red Death's plasma blast gun priming. There is no honor without victory, Balthus Voltmund growled back. There is no victory without the pack. You will take your place, Princeps, amongst the Ember Wolves, as it has been, as it is, as it will always be. As the voices of other commanding officers resounded through the Vox, Voltman heard Thrax grunt and acknowledgement. Form up, you war hounds of Horus, Voltman ordered. Ready your weapons and call upon the savagery of your machine spirits. The Princeps Primus thrust his arms forward and sat a bolt upright in his throne. Through the Titan manifold, Canis Altyriax answered. Skulking like some low beast of the plain, the warhound held its armored head at a hunch, 
while its Ursus Claw and Mega Bolter were raised up and ready to fire. The scout's titans, clawed feet, pounded through the shanties, flattening ramshackle structures and turning dunes to clouds of pounded ash. The clunk of the heavy metal servos and pistoning pump of magna hydraulics echoed through the acidic smoke clouds of brute industry. The hunters of Garnassia followed, picking their way through the destruction after Canis Ortiriax, Volpium Nox and Luper Lauditor following the Voltaman's lead, while the warhounds Pugnax Principio and Rapatia Rex fell into flanking positions either side of the Red Death. Moderati Schenk, Voltaman called. My compliments to the Magos Reductor. Inform him that the blessed ruin of his Thalaxi shock troops are needed, both quadrant and Delta East peripheral. Tell him that the Ember Wolves are about to make a kill, and both his siege craft and armored cohorts are required to extract the matter from metal bones. Aye, Princeps. Beyond, the hive shook with the arrival of the loyalist warmonger. Structures crumbled and subspires toppled. The colossal titan simply stepped through factory complexes, the detonation of uranic works and power stations flashing about the god machine's armored feet. Mushroom clouds billowed around Tantorus Magnificat's monstrous form, while energy unleashed from ruptured power cores felt its way up armored plates the thickness of a battle cruiser's hull. Attack pattern umbilicus, Boltman said, as the warhounds stalked into position. Through the rust-stained smoke and ruined architecture of the hive, the Titans took their places. Ordinarily, the movements of such mighty war machines would easily attract attention, but amongst the cascading destruction of Hive Septus and the booming advance of the warmonger, such movements were all but lost. Come on, the Princeps Primus quietly urged the loyalist Titan. Come and get us. He keyed to the comm channel on the arm of his throne. Tunstall, the duty is yours. Draw him on. Voltamund heard both the displeasure of Tunstall Hulk and Grentel Thrax across the channel. The Princeps Primus had offered the glory to one of Thrax's close allies. Hulk Thrapatia Rex was about to become bait in the trap the Ember Wolves had set for Tentorus Magnificat. From its position amongst the vent scrapers of a manufactorum stack, Rapatia Rex leveled its turbo lasers at the oncoming warmonger. A well-placed beam from Rapatia Rex would be barely enough to wound the mighty gun machine, but it would be more than enough to get the Titan crew's attention and draw Tentorus Magnificat on. Wait, Boltman ordered. Something was wrong. Moments before the air had been thick with the metallic boom of the giant's advance, Tantorus magnificent steps had crunched through structures and the unseen hivers crowding within. Explosions rippled through the path of decimation that marked his progress. Now, however, the air was still. Horsebex! The enemy titan has come to a halt, Schenk told his princeps. Voltamund knew that could mean only one thing. He had underestimated the warmonger's long-range scanners. Cordella spat. Tantorus Magnificus is arming missiles. Intensify forward void shields, the princeps barked, his scarred features wrapped around a snarl. Then into the open channel, he added. Brothers, brace yourselves. Incoming, Cordella called. A missile suddenly punched through the lead-colored clouds. Tantorus Magnificat was revealed, towering above them. Its towers and hunched fortresses twinkled with lights while its right arm, bearing a multi-racked launcher, was pointed down at the Carnassia pack. Canis Ortiriax had been facing Luper Lauditor when it was hit. One moment it was four hundred tons of armored pugnacity. The next, it was a rocketing explosion of shattered scrap. The dull funk of shrapnel hitting Canis Ortiriax's outer hull could be heard through the cockpit, 
and through the manifold, Voltamond could feel the destruction wash over his titan. The princeps primus knew he had to act. Shank, backtrack, Voltamond called out. The princeps thrust his left arm out. Cordella, answer. As the warhound backed through blazing shanty dwellings, its Vulcan megabolter roared to life, sending a magnificent stream of magna bore bolt shells the loyalist warmonger. The huge rounds plucked at the titans' overlapping void shields, sparkling, sizzling ripples to the fields like stones in a lake. The dank hive world air trembled with the blare of war horns. Tentorus Magnificat would answer the challenge. With huge steps, it crashed through the shanties. The titan moved with all the territorial urgency its colossal frame was capable of mustering. Giant weapons, ancient and bedecked with banners, were presented. Its ponderous movements swept like a gale through the smog drifting down from the chimneys of the industrial districts, clearing the filth away. Come on, you glorious abomination, the princeps said, as Canis Ortiriax backed through a nest of flimsy smoke tacks. Again! As the megabolter gave account of itself once more, Voltmund could feel the rhythmic tremble to the warhound superstructure and his command throne. That's it, he seethed. Keep your attention on me. On me, damn it! As Tantorus Magnificat waded on, its great racked launcher rotated with an echoing clunk. Princeps, Schenk said, but Voltamund ignored the moderati. As the warmonger primed a second missile for launch, Cordella turned in her throne. Princeps, she echoed, her voice tinged with something more than just dutiful concern. Hold your tongues, Voltamund shot back. I'll give the order when I'm ready. Cordella turned back, staring through the titan's cockpit eyes and up at the advancing mountain of plasteel and adamantium. Voltman watched. He waited. The timing had to be right, as did the positions and angles. Upon these factors everything depended. Engagements such as these were won or lost in seconds. Seconds of excitement and horror where a titan princeps had to hold his nerve. Balthus, Cordella called out. Now, brothers of iron and fury, the princeps commanded, brandish your claws and let's slip your harpoons. This god machine is ours for the taking. The first shot came from Volpium Knox. Over the Vox Channel, Voltman heard Haximilian, Bentacor, roar from the command throne as his warhound loosed its arm-mounted spear. Initially designed as grappling and boarding devices for World Eater's legionary vessels, the Ursus Claws were powerful titan hunters. Volpium Nox stumbled back as the harpoon tore away on its cable, able to punch through the heaviest armor plating. It had little problem with the racks and tubes of the warmonger's missile launcher. Skewering through with an appalling screech and a ringing that hung in the air about the loyalist titan, the impact of the claw knocked the launcher off its aim. The next missile streaked wide on a trail of rocket propellant smoke as it struck the rust stained crock crate of a cooling tower. The structure was transformed into an inferno of flame and showering grit. Canis Ortiriax was knocked to one side by the blast, but, under Moderati Schenk's control, managed to keep its footing. Like a giant herbivore surrounded by death world predators, Tentorus Magnificat was trapped. Spears shot up through the thinning smoke, burying themselves in the target with a shearing prang. Cable spools ran, lines dragged to tautness. The shanties shook with the tremble of gears and automotive engines. Power cores roared, and Magna Hydraulic struggled, displayed claw feet of battle pack Carnassia's warhounds scraped across the ground, shearing through corrugated complexes as the warmonger tried to escape their clutches. Trapped in a web of taut cables, Tentorus Magnifica tried to heave its way free. Hold it! Balthus Voltman called across the open channel. 
Call upon everything your machines have. The warmonger is ours now. Don't let it move. Don't let it breathe. The ember wolves hauled back at the behemoth, bracing it between them. Titanic weaponry mounted upon the warmonger's arms and Carapus fired off wildly, attempting to blast its tormentors to oblivion. Instead, all it achieved was turning the settlement and surrounding industrial zone into a mess of smoldering craters, into which the warhounds almost slipped. Heave! Baltimond called to his brothers as Canis Ultiriax stalked back in to join the fight. Harpoon heads worried at armored plating, and Cable sang their high pitched song. The hunched backs of the Carnassian machines steamed with the effort. Giant servos whine, and hydraulics hissed as the warhound scout titans scrabbled over backwards through the ash dunes and wreckage. Centaurus Magnificate's great, bellowing warhorn sounded once again. This time it seemed almost panicked. This time it was almost in rage. Baltimore could believe that it might be calling out for aid. Ospex sweep! he commanded. Long range. He didn't need it, however. Through the cockpit eyes of the warhound he saw the forward void shield flash and ripple with kinetic impacts. Squinting, the princeps primus could see the heat signatures of tank formations out on the ash wastes. Lurching across the dunes towards them, he could make out bane blades and armored personnel carriers. Hivers, Cordella informed her princeps. Planetary defense contingents. Baltimore thrust out his arm to the side. The contempt was clear on his face. Schenk and Cordella were busy at their stations as the great warhound heaved around. With a grunt of brute satisfaction, the princeps watched as Canis Ortiriax's megabolter unleashed its firepower. Bolts tore up through the wasteland, turning Chimera transports and their hive soldiers to chopped wreckage. Even super heavy tanks were turned back or aside by the relentless storm of shells. Skidding this way and that, through the ash as their tracks thrashed for better traction. Several mauled vehicles exploded as the bolt streams hit critical systems, fuel lines, and the like, while others were knocked down the sides of the dunes and rolled onto their backs to present their vulnerable underbellies. As hive world soldiers and tank crews, Bloody and broken abandoned their smash vehicles, they were met by Legio Aldax allied dark mechanicum transports. Cybernetic shock troops poured from troop bays. The Laxi warriors, impassive and indomitable, moved through the swirling ash, blasting hivers to splattered shreds with streams of energy from their lightning guns. Princeps, Cordella warned, drawing Voltman's attention to the besieged warmonger Titan. The honor will be mine, Grentel Thrax announced, as the Red Death hauled a Tentorus Magnificus. His harpoon had found a high target, and the Warhound's relentless efforts had almost managed to topple the Titan. Pugnax Principio's plasma blast gun hammered brightly blazing spheres into the Warmonger's void shields. Each blast was like a small sun in the fusillade swiftly overpowered the generators, and the shields began to collapse in a riot of color and spent energies. Forward, Voltimand ordered. Enough of these trifles. But, Princeps, Schenk said, his monotonous voice like a sedative in the confines of the cockpit. Do as I say, Voltimand snarled. As Canis Ulteriac stalked forth as a belligerent hunch, the loyalist warmonger lifted one mighty armored foot. Kicking out, the foot knocked the warhound back into an unsteady stumble. Voltimond was almost tipped from his throne and the cables torn from his temples. Cockpit rune banks flashed and sparked. The princeps felt the pain of the titan's wounded spirits through the manifold, but, crashing back through the shanties and into the side of a cooling tower, the warhound managed to regain its composure. Supported by the colossal rock creek chimney, Canis Ulteriax shook off dust, shattered masonry, and embarrassment. Damage report, 
the princeps primus demanded. As Schenk and Cordella struggled with their sparking stations, Baltimond smacked his fist against the back wall of the cockpit. Wake up, priest! As the two moderati read off a list detailing minor damage to locomotion drivers and some superficial malfunctions in the weapon systems, Baltimond watched Tentorus' magnificent fight for its life and the lives of all those within its armored shell. Heaving around, the warmonger lifted a Volpium Nox up by the cable and off its scrambling feet before whirling it back into the ground. As the warhound came crashing down, it too stumbled into surrounding structures before being righted again by the tautness of its connected cable. The warmonger brought its foot crashing down again, managing to connect with Pugnax Principio. Unlike Voltamund's warhound, the Pugnax Principio was not merely knocked back. It was stamped down into the earth, the colossal Tantorus Magnificate bringing its full city block weight down on the scout titan. Like his brothers, Voltamund heard Princeps Festelag and his crew die across the open channel as Pugnax Principio was pulverized by the much larger god machine. Detonating beneath the armored foot, the breached plasma reactor turned the ash and sand for a hundred meters about it to glass. At this, the Ember Wolves found their fury once more. Held firm between Volpium Nox, Rapacia Rex, and the Red Death, the warmonger wasn't going anywhere. Its great weaponry had been reduced to wild thunder and its automotive systems were straining. It was difficult for even a god machine's crew to orchestrate a counterattack when their mighty titan was straining hard not to topple over. As the Moderati finished their damage report, Baltimore spat. We can fight without those secondary systems, he said, lifting his arms to present Canis Ulteriax's weaponry to the ensnared enemy. Engage! The warhound loped forward, its Vulcan megabolters unleashing a continuous stream of mass reactive fire. The remaining void shields about the warmonger soaked up the damage, their surfaces rippling with the impacts. Baltimore roared, the warhound charged, the torrent of magna bore vault shells, found its way in through the collapsing shields and widening holes in Tentorus Magnificate's ablative defenses. Ammunition low, Cordella warned. Seventy-five percent depletion. It did not stop the Princeps Primus. The plan had been his. The kill would be his. Honor was at stake. As the Red Death continued to haul on its spear cable, Voltamund's incessant bolt stream pounded its way into a magazine compartment attached to one of Tantorus Magnificate's ancient battle cannon emplacements in a lower bastion. The blast was blinding. Twisted struts and pieces of shattered adamantium plating flew high through the air. The gunnery system to which the magazine was attached went up in a smaller, secondary explosion. Baltimore could only imagine the flame rolling havoc that the crew of the afflicted section must have been experiencing. Yes, the princeps hissed. The cockpit eyes had further delights for him, however. The detonation had rocked the already unbalanced Titan, with servos and magna hydraulics in the connecting sections compromised. Tentorus Magnificate reluctantly gave up its fight against the Ember Wolves and gravity itself. Heads up, Grentel Thrax warned, as the Red Death heaved the warmonger over. Both Rapacia Rex and Volpium Nox backed up, letting their cables run. Voltamund watched as the Titan wavered and then began to fall. It seemed to take an eternity. The great, weaponized limbs reached out uselessly, seemingly in slow motion. Armored bastion feet attempted to find their balance. The buried harpoons had done their work, however, and the fall was inevitable. One surprise of gargantuan grace and indomitability, Tentorus Magnificate now looked like a snapshot of some cataclysmic accident in progress. Its slow movements appeared clumsy and ridiculous. When the god machine finally met the ground, it leveled the landscape beneath it. 
Several more explosions rippled through the Titan superstructure as it buckled. Its ancient frame, never intended to support the colossal weight of the catapus at ninety degrees from true. Buttresses shattered, stanchions sheared through. Broken statuary and ruined glass rained down from the ramparts, while power generators in the industrial complexes crushed beneath its bulk flashed a blinding white. Shanties were blasted away in the backwash, and ash was thrown up into the air, covering the area with poisonous clouds of particulate matter. The warmonger's skull-like head lolled to one side. The internal lights of his left eye went dead. With a final, mournful blast of its war horns that kicked up dust from the ground beneath its chin, Tantorus Magnificat fell silent. Yes, Boltman said again. Nothing was more fitting or beautiful than his warhound's sight. Cordella? Princeps? Send word to the Magos Reductor. The carcass is his to strip. Tell him to unleash his thalaxi. And our orders, Princeps Primus? Schenk asked. Power down weapons and void shields, Baltimore said. Then onwards to claim my prize. Canis Ulteriax found the ugly shapes of the Red Death and Rapatia Rex waiting. The warhounds had disconnected their spear cables and were standing over the fallen Tentorus Magnificat like it was a hunter's trophy. The Vulpium Nox, meanwhile, had become tangled in surrounding wreckage and its own Ursus claw. This time I think not, Grentel Thrax called across the box channel. As the dust settled and Canis Ulteriax approached, there seemed something savage and threatening about the way the warhounds were carrying themselves. Cordella? They're both running with shields up and weapons primed, my princeps. Baltimore stared through the cockpit eyes of his warhound at the Carnassia Titans. He turned his head to one side, presenting the grizzled scars on his face. What's on your mind, Grentel? The princeps primus said. As the warhounds stood facing one another, cohorts of Thalaxi shock troops descended upon Tantorus Magnificat, laying siege to the tech guard positions within downed warmonger. They could have little notion that a greater battle still loomed over their heads. You and your godless titan, Gentle Thrax came back. Both of you afflicted with a cowardly soul. Neither worthy to lead this battle pack. It is time, Balthus. Time to step aside and let worthier men and machines lead. Princeps? Cordella asked, her voice hushed. Baltman's lip curled. Do it. As the warhounds stared each other down, the moderati activated Canis Ulteriax's forward void shield and re-engaged their weapon systems. You've spent too long with the world eaters, Baltman said. We're all still sons and daughters of Mars here. We're all still pledged the warmaster, are we not? Horus, Grentel Thrax told him. Like his brother Angron is served best by strength, a quality that you lack, Barthus. You would use your brothers as bait while standing idly by. I lead from the front. I lead by example. My victories are my own. And yet, Vaultman shot back, you stand over my prize. Myself and my brothers dragged the wounded beast to the ground. And who was it that wounded the god machine? Baltman demanded. Who delivered the killing shots that brought this monster down? The honor is mine, as it is for all titans failed by this battle pack. For Carnassia is mine also. Do you hear me, Thrax? I am Primus. I am the first by right. Now enough of our number have fallen today. Don't add your mongrel machine to the tally. Stand your warhound down. That goes for you too, Hulk. Baltimore waited. 
Red Death and Hulk's rapacious Rex were unmoved, however. Precious seconds passed. Ready, Megabolter, the Princeps Primus whispered, slowly lifting his left arm. Ready, Princeps, Cordella told him. Few were expecting what happened next. Rapacia Rex was suddenly knocked forward and then disappeared in a blaze of flame. Engulfed in a blinding inferno, the warhound burned. Its reinforced shell was doused in promethium jelly that burned as hot as an armory furnace. Inside, Tunsil Hulk and his crew roasted. Vorpium Nox had disentangled itself, listening to the interchange. The warhound had stalked up behind Rapacia Rex and hit it at point-blank range in the back. Voltmund heard Grentel Thrax roar over Hulk's final screams. In the silhouette of the eye-searing flame, the Red Death turned, aiming its arm-mounted turbo laser straight at its new attacker. As the pulsing beam of energy raged into the haunched body of Vulpium Nox, it hit something that went supercritical within the Warhound Titan's body. As the chassis violently exploded, the cockpit followed suit. But both were engulfed in the Promethean blast of the Titan's inferno cannon reservoirs. As both the demolished Volpium Nox and the Red Death vanished behind a curtain of flame, Voltman squinted. Echolocation and visual spectra were useless. The entire area was one big heat signature. Target? Voltman demanded. Like her princeps, Cordella searched for the enemy warhound. I've got nothing, she told him. Fire, anyway. Voltman growled, lifting his arm. The Vulcan Megabolter hammered a stream of rounds into the fire. As the flames died away, they could see the Red Death. Its armored shell was black and smoldering, while its turbo laser was pointed directly back at Canisal Tyriax. Its void shield had collapsed with the backwash of the explosion, and its armor plating was perforated in a hundred places. I have you now, Voltman said aiming the Megabolter squarely at his foe. With a doom-laden clunk that reverberated through the Titan superstructure, the Megabolter's ammunition belt ran dry. Schenk, Cordella, and their Princeps Primus couldn't tear their eyes from the spectacle of the smoldering Red Death. Voltamund bit back a curse and gripped the arms of his throne. Brace! The turbo laser fired. When it did... All Voltman knew was light and heat. For a moment, everything was cacophonous and unbearable. He tried to blink the intensity from his eyes, his nostrils stung with the chemical broom of the hive-world atmosphere. All he could do was experience the agony of Carousel Tyriax to the manifold as its machine spirit suffered. As his sight returned, the princeps realized that the cockpit was open to the air. The turbo laser beam had carved a path straight through the left hand side of the cockpit. Schenk was gone. So too was his throne and command station. Voltamund looked upon the Red Death with his own eyes, unaided, unclouded. He knew that Grentel Thrax would be staring back from within his own roasted cockpit. Cordella, Voltamund said reaching forwards for the Moderati's shoulder. Are you still with me? To the last, Princeps, she managed through raw, blackened lips. Then let us show Grentel Thrax our claws, Boltman said, and grapple with our brother. Thrusting his right arm forward, he fired the Ursus claw. The harpoon rocketed forth, unswerving, unstoppable. Balthus, Voltman, punched the spear straight into the cockpit of the Red Death. As it was buried there, in and through the Warhound's ugly bridge compartment, Voltman could plainly hear the sounds of human suffering over the open channel. Something was still alive in the cockpit, at least. The princeps hoped that it was Grentel Thrax. Tearing his arm back, Voltman violently tore the head from the Red Death and Thrax's ruined body from the shattered cockpit. The whole Titan, 
lurched forwards, the decapitated body crashing onto the stump of its neck and the muzzle of its turbo laser crashing whatever remains lay before it. Settling back into his throne, Balthus Voltmund glowered at the dead warhound. I got you, the princeps mouthed. The prize and the honor is mine. No, Cordella told him. It took the princeps a moment to register what she had said. What? The moderati looked from her rune banks to her princeps before standing up from her throne. Baltimore did likewise. The pair of them looked down from their smashed cockpit. The Laxi shock troops were no longer attacking the corpse of Tentorus Magnificat. They were fleeing the down titan, while armored personnel carriers were thrashing their tracks back through the ashen sand. As a princeps, Volsamund understood. The reactor core. Condella confirmed what her rune screen had told her with a slow nod. In a final act of defiance, the crew of the warmonger hoped to deny the traitors the ancient god machine. They had overloaded the power systems, sending the reactor into a critical meltdown. Nothing would escape a blast of that size. Not the fleeing Thalaxi, not Canis or Tiriax. Balthus, Voltman, slumped back down. The warhounds of Carnassia were no more. His command was ended. He had been beaten. Gripping the arms of his command throne, Princeps Primus watched as oblivion came for him in the unbearable light of a miniature star.